Hey there, I'm Hannah Rosen, and I wanted to let you know that Invisibilia is back on June 1st. This season, we're asking the question, how is it that two people can look at the exact same thing and see something completely different? You can listen and subscribe to Invisibilia on the NPR One app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello and welcome to Car Talk from National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack. The Tappet Brothers, we're broadcasting this week from the five beta crapper division here at Car Talk Plaza. Well, it's actually time to revisit the famous Bulwer Lytton contest. His name was uh, Edward George Earl Bulwer Lytton. He opened his novel, Paul Clifford, in 1830 with the immortal words, it was a dark and stormy night. Yes, it was. It also says here he was responsible for the line, the pen is mightier than the sword. I don't think so. I thought I always thought that was William Shakespeare. Well, you thought wrong then. Evidently. Now, here we have people write in and try to write things which are as outrageous as what Edward George Earl Bulwer Lytton. And, I, and there are various categories, and I'm going to read to you my personal favorites. The winner in the detective. Arena? Arena, yeah. Genre? <laughs> the graphic crime scene photo that stared up at Homicide Inspector Chuck Venturi from the center of his desk was not a pretty picture. Though it could have been, Chuck mused. Had it only been shot in soft focus with a shutter speed of one one twenty fifth second at f five point six, these these are uh, oh science fiction category. Kirk's mind raced as he quickly assessed his situation. The shields were down, the warp drive and impulse engines were dead. Life support was failing fast, and the Enterprise was plummeting out of control toward the surface of Epsilon six. And as Scotty and Spock searched frantically through the manuals, trying to find a way to save them all, Kirk vowed as he stared at the solid blue image filling the main view screen that never again would he allow a Microsoft operating system to control his ship. (laughs) 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 He's a (laughs) Western category. Out of the killer cold of the 40 below unending Arctic night into the glowing warmth of the last ditch saloon, we stumbled numbly, dragging behind us the frozen dead corpse of our friend Bartholomew, whom the hardened permafrost of the tundra resisted our burying, and leaning poor stiff Bart against the wall, gaily called out for drinks for the house as we were flush with prospected gold that now only needed to be split two ways. <laughs> So so cold, you might say. <laughs> hey, whatever happens, you know. <laughs> My first night with, with Anastasia was the kind of magical, passionate ride that left me with my pants on the back of the kitchen chair, my underwear on the chandelier, my socks in the toilet, my hair on the door handle, half of my artificial legs somewhere in the pantry, my kidney in a Coleman ice chest on its way to the Moroccan black market, and my car in a Tijuana auto repair shop with new red diamond tuck interior. (laughs) (laughs) That's a night, man. (laughs) Uh, Oh, this is terrible. This is the the pun category. Okay. While they listened to the dulcet strains of Wayne Newton, quaff champagne cuddled in the hot tub as bubbles nibbled at their shoulders like a peckish Pomeranian, Tiffany and Shane grew lethargic and groggy. And as Shane drew a final sweet drag from his cigarette, an errant breeze hijacked an ember, only to release it into the slumbering Tiffany's mane. But Shane, besotted and inherently doltish, could muster no plan of rescue until he heard Wayne Newton intone, Dunk her, Shane. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's it. Well, if you think that stuff was bad, stick around. You ain't heard nothing yet. (laughs) Listen to some of our bad car advice. The number to call is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, my name is Peter. I'm calling from Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, how are you, Peter? I'm doing great, or the People's Republic of Boulder, as we call it. Yes. Um, I've got a 1969 Jeep Commando. Yeah. Um, And I'm thinking of taking it to an automotive psychologist, but uh, I thought I would try you guys first, because it has this interesting problem. It can sense fear. Ah, just like a dog. It's like a Doberman Pinscher. Exactly. 
and uh, they smell it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, and typically, it it runs just great. As soon as you try to get it out in the highway, is that when it? No, it's whenever I'm in a hurry to get somewhere, it'll refuse to start. Ah. And so sure. he can sense when I'm in a hurry, or, or I don't use it for uh, play when I have to be somewhere on time very often. But when I use it when I have to be somewhere on time, right? You get in the car and you say, "I hope this piece of junk starts," exactly. even if you say it to yourself. You turn the key exactly. and nothing happens. And uh, you know, if I've got to get to a meeting or I'm trying to get home at a certain time, I'll jump in the jeep and turn it over, and it won't do anything. It'll just sit there. No sound whatsoever. No sound whatsoever. Oh, that's good. And uh, whenever you, uh, in order to get it to start, you have to go through a, um, a ritual. The, the ritual. <laughs> go ahead. We're ready. We love it. Okay, okay. Your face it's, toward the east, right? You best, take off yeah. your shirt. Does it involve, like, wearing pantyhose or anything? I just want to make sure this is a family show, you know. Are there so. any farm animals involved? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot like that. Okay. Uh, it's the ritual I've been doing for five years, despite several mechanics looking at it. Yeah, what do you do? Well, you start by wiggling all the wires under the dashboard. Uh-huh. And I think that's just kind of a, that doesn't really do anything. That's just kind of a warm up. No, I like that because that goes along with my theory. But go okay. ahead. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and that doesn't do anything. It won't. It'll still. Uh, you know, the amp light will come on, but it won't do anything. Oh, prior to which the amp light didn't come on. No, the amp light always comes on. Oh, is this okay. an automatic? So, tri- it dims. It dims, so it kind of shows that you've uh, are yeah. draining current. Oh, this is not an automatic. No. Okay. Good. Um, okay. And then you have to get out of the vehicle, open the hood. Wiggle a specific set of wires kind of near the firewall. Yeah. And then slam the hood down and get back into the Jeep, and it'll start right up. Yeah. No and, kidding. Um, and and you've, have you ever tried uh, isolating the, the particular piece of the ritual which does it? Yeah. For example, think, did you ever just try shaking the wires underneath? You said that doesn't do it, so we know it's not that. It do it, but I think that, it, that if you don't go through the whole ritual, it upsets it. And then no, it you have to do yeah. all the steps. Yeah. That's right, that's right. I suspect that if you skip the first two step steps and just slam the hood, that, that would do it. That's what I thought for a long time, that the whole thing was just slamming the hood. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever test that theory? Yeah, and it's still uh, just opening the hood and slam. It didn't seem to appease this particular Jeep. Ah. Yeah, it sounds to me, as a layman, <laughs> <laughs> that you have a bad connection at the solenoid. The solenoid? Doesn't this thing have, I believe this vehicle uses a Ford starter, and one of the things that you're jiggling wires on looks like a little cylinder, maybe about two inches high by an inch or so in diameter with a bunch of wires connected to it, like four. Um... No, say yes. The, It'll be much. It'll, I, the, the, flow, the, the flow of the show will be much better if you say, <laughs> you say yes. yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Tell the truth, Peter. Don't lie just for the sake of the flow. <laughs> All right, tell Wait, the truth. Now these wires are on the firewall and not on the fender. They're on the fender. He no, said the, the firewall. firewall. The firewall. There goes the solenoid. Right theory. behind the the, uh, the air filter near what I think is a little the ballast resistor or some strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, ain't yeah. It okay. either. The solenoid's on the fender, so it's not the solenoid. Okay, that takes care I've, of that. I've, had, I've replaced um, the ignition switch, and recently the engine's been replaced. Mm. And um, and the the starter solenoid itself has been replaced during this five years of this ritual. And mm. it doesn't. None of that seems to affect the ritual. And, what, what what size motor is this? Um, it's a V six. V V. They didn't do no stinking V's in '69. They were yeah. still working on. Uh, <laughs> It was still burning out. coal. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. well, it's a straight know. six. It's a six. Yeah. It's a six. Yeah. yeah. Six. All right. Now let's go back. I think I'm going to have to revise my opinion here. Okay. Yeah. I'm convinced now that the slamming of the hood is what fixes it. <laughs> <laughs> because I think somewhere you have a bad ground. Okay. And and maybe that bad ground is, is getting just momentarily cr- fixed. When you slam the hood, and once you start it, you don't need that ground anymore because that ground is the ground that runs from the block back to the battery. So that's the wire that I would focus on. Okay. Because mm. I think that's where your bad connection is. You're sending electricity from the battery to the starter, but it has to make the complete loop and come back to the battery, and it can't do it because you have a bad ground. And when you slam the hood or jiggle the wires or spin around anti-clockwise three times or do whatever you do. Wittershins, I believe yes. we call it. Yeah. Yes, what's the other way? I don't know. <laughs> uh, would the best recommendation just be to, like, jump up and down on the hood whenever I need to start? That's it? what I would do. Yeah. Yo, know, kick the bumper. I mean, none of this explains how it knows that you're in a hurry, of course. Right. But you must have some some subconscious, reflexive reaction. Something, something in your body language. It's the way you get into the seat. Right. 
It's the way like I jump in it when I'm in a hurry. Right. Or something. Uh, you right. jump in, and whatever that jumping does, that's what makes that connection. Mm. Yeah. I think that must be it, because you know, whenever I take it to mechanics, it starts fine because mechanics are never in a hurry. That's right. Exactly. Especially when they're on the clock. Right. But I would have right. your mechanic look at the ground connections. That's where the problem is. Okay. Good luck, Peter. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for your call. Uh huh. Bye bye. Bye bye. One eight 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 Car Talk or one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi. Hi. Who's this? This is Sandra from Baton Rouge. Sandra, you sound very alert and wide awake, and and uh, <laughs> and, and you sound you're, like you're going to be trouble. I might no, be. You might no, be. You, you sound like a very strong-willed person. <laughs> You're right, organized, you, you get up and go, you do things, and it all it, it's all in your voice, kid. It is? Well... Wow. Yeah. Are, we, are we right? Is that your personality? It, it really is. Yeah. Really? We, we need you. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> She'd spoil everything. <laughs> so what, what's on your mind today? Well, it's sort of embarrassing. I, I was having a sort of a bad day and wasn't really paying attention, I guess, and I put diesel fuel in my car. Did you? But I have a Honda Odyssey. Does it run? Well, I put only like five gallons in. Holy! <laughs> it was what, like an empty tank. Oh, it was an empty tank. You put five gallons in, and then what did you do? And then I kind of noticed that the nozzle was sort of hard to keep in. and. So did you stop, or did you fill, fill up I the did. rest of the I tank? I did. I did stop, and then oh. I put another... Three quarters of a tank of 93 octane because it wasn't really a garage, and I had my children in the car, so I couldn't really just stop. Ah, well, so you made a a battlefield decision to dilute the stuff. Right. That was good. Was it? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think so. You made it home, didn't you? Well, luckily, I, I was only like a few miles from my house, so I, I made it home. Yeah. And then I um, I sort of forgot to tell my husband about it. Yeah right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. And then I went to work the next day. And drove the car? And he drove the car because I worked ooh, on the weekend. Ooh, ooh. Oh, how convenient that you should have forgotten. Yeah. What did you do to the car, you <laughs> moron? <laughs> he said, so what's up with a car? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you and, said? And, and I, was, I decided I had just better come clean and told him. Yeah. And he wasn't impressed. <laughs> what a spoil sport. <laughs> the car was jerky, but it drove. Yeah. But then the next day, the engine light turned on. Yeah. Well, well, actually, I like the idea that you put in 93 because you figured the diesel fuel is has very such low, low octane, octane. So you were going to counterbalance that yeah. with the 93. Was that your thinking? Well, you know, I didn't know that much about it, but it I knew It didn't matter. That... It was more expensive. It had to be better. That's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> I just figured I, I usually put 87. 93 sounds is higher. I'll just dilute it. Well, that that was good. I mean, you did do the right thing. I think you did exactly the right thing. I, you had two choices. Stop where you are, right? You got five gallons of diesel fuel in there. You wouldn't have made it home. Mm -hmm. However, you would have made it easier for the guys who have to fix it. Because... <laughs> Because they would have been able to drain the, only five gallons out instead of 20. I see. Or 15. It's right, and then you would have saved thing. yourself the expense of having to replace uh, the oxygen sensors. <laughs> Both of uh, them. The catalytic converter. Uh-huh. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the fuel injectors. God knows The fuel injectors. So that's my question, really. What am I doing to my car? Yeah, well. well it, you still haven't drained the stuff out? I kept just adding 93 octane every time the <laughs> gas tank went down by like a quarter of a oh, tank. Oh, so you've gone through... It's been like three weeks, so I've, I've done that like two or three times, and now the car's driving a lot better, but the... The check engine light's still on? It's still on, but it's it's flickering now. Like, it, it's thinking it's of turning getting off. getting better. Oh, that's, you probably ruined that with the diesel <laughs> fuel, too. <laughs> yeah, God. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you did run the risk uh -huh. of ruining all that stuff, but... I don't think it's this necessarily true that you did. Uh-huh. And, and, and the die is cast. Yeah. I mean, whatever you wrecked is wrecked. <laughs> Forget all about it. Just okay. drive no, the car. I don't think so. Fill it up with 93 as you often as you can. Uh -huh. and you say it's running better, but it ain't running right, is it? No, no, it is. It's, it's, it seems to be okay, except the light concerned me. And I, went, I did yeah. go to a garage and ask them, so what am I doing to my car? They didn't know. They just said, oh, well, just drain the gas and... Get the sensor light fixed, but you'll have to go to the Honda dealer for that. 
But that really didn't answer my question. I really wanted to know, am I destroying anything or can I just write well, it Well, I don't think you're destroying anything anymore. Anymore? No, I, think, I don't think so either. I think what was destroyed was destroyed. If you damage seals in the injectors or if you damage the oxygen sensors or the catalytic converter, it's done. Okay. I think at this point you should go and get the engine light checked and find out what it is that you wrecked mm -hmm. and get the light turned off and hope for the best. What if the light turns off on its own since it looks that like it? would be better, wouldn't it? Well, well, <laughs> well I, 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 can tell, I can tell no matter what we say, you're going to wait at least a few more weeks to I set am. the light. I know that. Well, check engine lights do go away. Can I ignore it if it goes away? Let's ignore it. Let's ignore it. Yeah. Right. We know that you want to forget about it. Yeah, I do. So that's the advice we're going to give you. Are we going with our strategy of give the listener what they want? Positive reinforcement. We, we, we already identified Sanders being that kind of person who knows what, what she's she going to do. Yeah, and so she's not going to do. Have and she's out. decided she's not going to do anything. <laughs> 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 and I like that. <laughs> I like a person with that. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good. With, a, with your car. conviction, you know. So you do nothing. Okay. Forget you even called us. Just forget this whole conversation. It's out of my mind. Good. You are getting very sleepy. See you, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> and pay attention next time, will you? <laughs> hey, thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, look, before we give the answer to last week's puzzle, we have to take a short break so we can go to the Little Mechanics Room. <laughs> we'll be right back. The Little Mechanics Room. You might have seen it in my driver on the side of the road or Flying down the highway with an oversized load It rattles and it rumbles like a big can of bolts But it goes zero to twenty like some Palomino Colts Now some people sneer when they hear the engine roar But it's bought and paid for, can't ask for more Makes my poor heart so red a reservation car. Oh, what? Let's call. A reservation car. It ain't pretty and don't always take me far. But I wouldn't trade nothing for my reservation car. It's got rusted doors and floorboards, you can feel the wind blow. We may need to use our feet just like the Flintstones. The paint is chipped and peeling where the bumper stickers are on dream. Catcher in the window now, isn't that smart? I know it ain't the kind of car for everyone, but it's got my heart one. Get yourself one for a ton of fun. Race car. And even though the NPR window washer dumps his bucket on our seat pushes whenever <laughs> he hears us say it, this is NPR. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Tire Rack. Now, if you're like me and you own a car, you've probably done something dumb to it. Like the time I ran out of oil and used a quart of Filippo Berrio extra virgin olive oil as a substitute. Well, Tire Rack makes it easy to be smart when it comes to your tires. At TireRack.com, you can look up the correct tires for your car and pick the best ones based on ratings and reviews. Plus, your new tires can be delivered in as little as one business day to a recommended local installer. So even if you forget to release the parking brake or send your brother's 65 AMC ambassador to the crusher, you can still redeem yourself by getting the right tires. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install, smarter. Hi, we're back listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to talk about cars, car repair, and the answer to last week's puzzle. Now, here, here it is. I'm sure you'll, you'll remember it in, in a minute. I remember it already. You do? Yeah. Cool. Let's say you have two decks of, of playing cards, 52 cards each, you know, regular cards. Yeah. And you put both decks together and shuffle them up. Got it. So you've got 104 cards all shuffled together. Then you split them back into two equal piles. So you haven't looked at them now. You're in a traditional manner. Mm -hmm. You've just counted them out. So you have a pile of 52 on one side. We'll call that pile A. And a pile of 52 cards on the other side. And they're all mixed up. Pile two. Pile two. Here's the question. What are the chances that the number of red cards in pile A equals the number of black cards in pile B? And question two, or B, <laughs> how many cards do you have to look at to be sure of your answer? Yeah. Well, I happen to know the answer. The Imagine. Go ahead. <laughs> the I chances are one. Yeah, well, hundred percent. A hundred percent. Imagine if you, let's say, by some luck, you shuffled up all these cards, and all the red cards wound up in one pile. We'll call that pile A, mm -hmm. and for simplicity's sake, we'll call the other pile B. <laughs> and all the black cards wound up in that. Then, yeah. then you would, then you would say, well, certainly, the number of red cards in deck A or pile A equals the number of black cards in pile B. Yes. Now, I, I, I ask you to construct a scenario where it wouldn't be the case always. 
How about one and 51? Exactly. Take a card out of pile A and donate it to pile B. But right. when you do that, you must reciprocate. Right. You must take a black card from pile B and donate it to pile A. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you have 51 and 1 and 51 and 1. And no matter how you do this, <laughs> if you wind up with 52 cards in each pile, this is like... Remember the puzzle years ago where you had a, a, a thing of, uh, of water and a thing of wine? You took a teaspoon of wine and put it in the... Oh, the, that one. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and part, part B of the question, how many cards do you have to look at to verify your answer? None. None. Not a one. Isn't that a great... Well, card. you think it's great because you got the answer. If you hadn't got the answer, you'd be all over this thing. For one thing, the answer was a given. Because when you said, what are the chances? I gave it away, you mean? You gave it away. I mean, what, what, what are the chances? Are you, ex are you expecting someone to say 12 out of 49? Yeah. Or <laughs> 0.2375? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone who would have thought that that was the answer would have given up. And the only ones who would have not given up would be the ones who said the answer either has to be zero a one. <laughs> oh, okay, that's true. Anyway, who's our winner this week? Our winner this week is Dominic Matranga. M-A-T-R-A-N-G-A. -A -A. Hmm. He's from Mobile, Alabama, and for having his correct answer chosen from among the thousands of correct answers we got, Dominic is going to win a $25 gift certificate to the Car Talk Shameless Commerce Division, with which he can get a copy of our father's CD, Why You Should Never Listen to Your Father When It Comes to Cars, which is a perfect Father's Day gift, by the way, provided your father has already <laughs> cut you out of the will, or there's no will. <laughs> anyway, we'll have an interesting little puzzler coming up in the third half of the show. You notice I didn't say no because it isn't. Not going to be no. Exactly no. That's all right. But stick around. You might like it. Uh, right now, if you have a question about your car or anything else, our number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 1888-2278-255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. <laughs> How many possible ways are there to say this? Lots number? more. You'll see. <laughs> Hello. This is Warren from Miami. Warren. How are you? Good. How are you? Are you a retiree in Miami, or are you one of the other people? No, I'm not. Are you hardworking? A, a hard worker. Absolutely. Great. You sound young. That's why I asked. No. No, you don't sound young. Mid-40s. You sound young. He's young, yeah. Do I really? That's young, right? That's, yeah. Well, yep. <laughs> compared to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Warren, what's up, man? Uh, my wife's Camry. Yeah. Uh, about uh, 58000 on it. The uh, check engine light came on. Uh, we went to the dealer, and they said it needs something called O2 sensors yeah. for $590. But then my wife said, well, what do they do? And the dealer kind of said, well, they don't do anything. And actually, your engine's running fine, so you don't really need them. So given that, who's going to pay uh, that kind of bucks for something that doesn't apparently do anything? So they wrote, uh, customer declined repairs. And we're wondering, now the engine light stays on, the car's running fine. Are we missing something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the O2 sensor. <laughs> well, the O2 sensor does do something. And they're not right about that. Uh-oh. I mean, and it, and it may, in fact, appear to be running fine, but it would run finer if the O2 sensor were operating. Really? Well, yeah. We kind of found it believable, because usually they're trying to sell you something, not the other one. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it, I, I think they're I setting it, you up. I find it very strange that they took this approach. Right. Well, what the O2 sensors do, this, this vehicle I, uh, has two of them, uh, is they monitor the amount of oxygen that's present in the exhaust flow. And if there's too much, it... it it's telling them that there is not enough fuel being put in because it's not using up all the available oxygen. So it allows the computer then to adjust the mixture, uh -huh. okay, to, to make the fuel-air ratio correct. And the difference in how you perceive the car to be running may be so small that you wouldn't notice it, but it is running more efficiently when the O2 sensors are working. Right. We recently had a Ford in the shop that, that had the, the check engine light uh, coming on. Did it look like a truck? <laughs> yeah, it was a truck. Oh, it was a truck. <laughs> and we, we ran the scan test on it, and it said nothing about any malfunction with the oxygen sensor. And I just happened to be looking under the truck an hour later and noticed that the oxygen sensor was missing. <laughs> really? It was absolutely gone. Really? Yeah. And and the computer had the failed com to pick it up. But what, but if if the oxygen sensor is malfunctioning or it's not there, what it can do is is damage the catalytic converter. 
I see. So they, they may be setting you up for a bigger kill. So I think this is a sting operation. Yeah, so I think they're setting you up. Instead of getting a measly five ninety out of you, they're going to get two grand. There you go. Well, now at least we've discovered the motive. <laughs> and I thank you. And they certainly have the means and the opportunity. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I would probably have them replaced. It may be that you need just one of them, but they, there's a way for them to test the, the voltage output of the oxygen sensor, and they can determine if it's one or both. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. right. It would be unusual for both of them to go at exactly the same time, but they probably would go at approximately the same time. Well, that sounds like a dealer approach to replace both, even if one went. Well, it's my it approach It is too, quicker actually. and easier. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and more lucrative. Right. And Absolutely. foolproof. But wait a minute, Warren. Yes, sir. When you retire, where are you going to move to? <laughs> I've been worried about that. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Warren. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Oh, boy. one eight 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 car talk That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Rhonda, and I'm from Washougal, Washington. Rhonda with an H? Yes. Washuga? Yes. Yeah. Uh, across Columbia River from Portland. Okay. We're, we're with you. Got it. Okay. Um, I have a 93 Dodge Caravan. Mm hmm. And uh, it has a real low, loud idle. All of a sudden, it's gotten gradually worse. Yeah. So it sounds kind of like ba da ba da ba da ba da. And whenever I go to step on the gas, it'll accelerate very, very slowly. The RPMs will go really high, and then it'll, it'll either lurch forward and slow way down, or it will start to accelerate slowly and make a lot, lot of loud, low banging noises. Yeah, so? <laughs> <laughs> I need to go faster. People honk at me because I'm accelerating so slowly. So let me get this right. While you're sitting at a light, without being, without trying to move the thing, right? you're in drive. Yeah. And it's going... It's going... Yeah. Yeah. And then you try to accelerate, and it doesn't want to go. Well, the RPMs will go up really high, and it'll start to accelerate really slowly, and then it'll get to where it's ready to shift again, and it'll either lurch really hard and then go jerk faster, or it'll make a lot of loud banging sounds and continue to accelerate slow. Well, uh, banging sounds. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Good. <laughs> I'm a lead foot, and I, I can't go anymore. You haven't had anyone look at this thing yet. I took it into our transmission guy, and he said it's not the transmission, it's engine performance. Exactly my point. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you could have two things so awfully wrong with it. Well, yeah. she and does I have. That the well, thing see, is... I've, had, I've had caravans in the past, and they have, they're notorious for bad transmissions. You, well, yes, I know that. But so, this thing is a V6. That's all, yes. It's a V6. It's probably a 3.3 liter yes, engine. Correct. And I think you're running on five cylinders. That would explain the loping at idle and the rough running. And it would also explain the lack of power because you only have five, six, or maybe even less. Okay. Of the, you might have just even two-thirds of the available power. Yikes. But it doesn't explain the low, loud oh, yeah. idle. It, yeah, it does because it's running it, on five it cylinders. Jerks. Yes, uh, while you're sitting there in drive, the engine is shaking, the car is shaking. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. Blah, 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 blah. Just, ah. Yeah. Tell me how quickly you forget this is just the way your dart ran. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> shaking because it, one, either one of your spark plug wires has, has fallen off mm -hmm. or, or some such thing. You know, either you have well, a... Wouldn't, a, a, wouldn't the, the transmission guy have seen that the spark plug wire was not attached? No. May, oh, okay. Maybe. I mean, he, 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 first of all, you should go back and hug this guy. Because he he could have rebuilt the transmission and then told you, oh, by the no. way. And well, then just plugged in the brother. wire. It's my friend's brother, so he wouldn't have done that to me. Oh. <laughs> okay, so you think it's just a spark plug wire? Well, I, I'm no. just guessing that it could be okay. a, it could be a fouled plug or you could actually have a burned valve. I mean, there are any, you could have a vacuum leak. There are any number of things okay. that could make the engine run on four or five cylinders and would give you all the symptoms that you have. The rough running, the poor performance, the, you, you know... Uh, uh, inadequate acceleration, everything could be explained by something very simple. Okay. So you should get it someplace. Okay. Soon. Okay. All right. Okay. Good luck. Hey, I love your show, guys. I listen to you every weekend. Thanks Great. for listening and thanks for calling. Thanks, okay. Rhonda. Bye-bye. Okay. 1888 car uh what is that? What's that? 1888 car talk. That's 88822. <laughs> a little mental lapse there. 227 8255. Hello, you're on car talk. Hi, this is Keller Grace. I'm calling from Williamsburg, Virginia. Keller? Yes. From Williamsburg? Williamsburg, Virginia, that's right. Williamsburg. And Keller as in Keller Artil? Keller, yes, I get that, actually. There you go. <laughs> One of the many nicknames that you can make from that name. <laughs> so what's up, Kel? Well, 
Well, I've got a beetle here. No kidding. And it's my second one, but it's time to part ways with it for various reasons. And uh, in the left passenger's floorboard uh, is a big hole. Rather, there is no left passenger's floorboard. Yeah, there's a carpet over it. <laughs> no, you, there's nothing. There's actually. nothing. Oh, that's good. You can you see mean what the, left, the weather the is The left like. rear, the left rear floorboard. Left front floorboard. That's the driver's side. No, right then. I'm sorry. The passenger side. Oh, the right oh. left side. Is gone. <laughs> the right left side. The yeah. passenger side. And That's I curious. This, I took this seat out to get uh, the shoddy uh, fix it job that was there before it completely out. Yeah. And so my question is what might I do to get something else in there? I've got, I had a friend with a MIG welder yeah. and I had a street sign, but he went to Alaska. So now, <laughs> street sign. <laughs> now I'm left street. with a street sign and a friend with access to welding material, but it, it can't come to the car. So we could cut a piece of the street sign to fit in the car, but then the question is how best to uh, to get it in. There. Oh, so this is. I mean, a- you've purloined like a stop sign. No, no, it was found. It was oh, found, and you yeah. picked it up. You can't pick those things up. And it's interesting how people's notion of what's right and wrong changes when something uh, changes position. Well, it, you would it, it, never think of climbing up that pole and ripping the sign off. Oh no! But, but it was. But it's fair game once it falls to the ground. Well, it was. It was in the house when we moved into it. Ah, so he's, no, he's right, completely yeah. innocent. So well, now you want this. You want this piece welded in. Well, the thing is, the friend with the MIG welder's in Alaska now, so I don't have yeah. someone that can come to the car and weld it in for me. But yeah. what I do have is a friend that has access to a welding equipment inside a building. Someone's got a, a welding set in a building. Why? What, what kind of a building is it? An office building? <laughs> it's, a, it's an art studio. It's an art oh, studio. This is this an a sculptor. Yes, it has exactly. oxyacetylene torch. Exactly. Oh, okay. I got you now. There is one admonition, uh-huh. uh, which, which may be unnecessary, but, but I'll make it anyway. Uh, the gas line runs yes. through that tunnel. That was a question I had, too. What, yes. what might happen if you get a welder down in there? That would be bad. Uh-huh. I a, can tell you that. The thing, though, is the car has a propensity to run out of gas because the gauge is broken. So it probably wouldn't be hard to, to do that. Well, but fumes still linger? Well, it doesn't oh, yeah. take much gas no, I to wouldn't... make... Don't think that there's no gas just uh-huh. because the, the the gauge says empty or the car doesn't run. Uh-huh. When, when that oxyacetylene flame gets anywhere near anything, it doesn't take much. As you yourself may know, okay. if you've ever fooled around with a lawnmower like I have, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take much to get a pretty violent explosion. Okay. So... I would make sure I took it someplace where a guy would have some experience doing this. Yeah, I don't think I—I I don't think I'd have any artist do it. No, I mean, the artist would just help me cut out the sign to fit the space. And then how's it gonna? How's this, this piece gonna stay in there? That's my question. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> well, see, the, unfortunately, the floor of this car is more than just the floor. Right. It is. It is, in fact, the, the, the whole the, pan. It's it, the structure. It's the frame of the car. So, there, there's still some edge around the frame, though, that, that can support the sign. Yeah. Yeah, but you need to weld the sign in. That's the bottom line. I can't glue it in. You can't glue it no, in. No, because, because you've got a huge hole there, which if you don't make it part of the structure, uh-huh. you've got a structure with a big hole in it. Right. That, so that's not really good. On the other hand, you don't usually sit on this side of the car. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there's not even a seat there. We yeah. took that out. And you're going to sell it anyway. You just you started out the whole conversation by telling us you exactly. were going to part I company. Want to get it, I want to get it in selling condition, so I don't have the moral obligation of well, falling. Well, you do have the moral obligation of making it somewhat safe. Exactly. Unless you sell it in as-is condition, in which case you disclose what's wrong with it. Right. And you, and you heap the moral obligation on the next <laughs> owner. In which case, just put the sign... In the front seat uh-huh. and sell it as is with the sign laying there saying this sign must be welded around that hole. Okay. And I, I would feel comfortable telling somebody that. Okay. I don't think you have any obligation to go on and make sure that this person follows your advice. No, no. Right. I mean, exactly. you've you done your part. Your moral obligation by just telling the new owner. What has to be done. Yeah. So do it right. I mean, either, either fix it right, have a qualified welder do it, and that mm-hmm. person will know how to do it without setting the car on fire. Right. And, and if the car does get set on fire, then you're all done. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it that way. Claim the blue book value. Yeah, right. just don't be around while he's doing it. But don't do it yourself because it, it is tricky. Sell it as is, you think? Yeah. Sell it as is. Okay. Put the sign over the hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Keller. Good. Thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. Him. Okay, bye-bye. That was a very informative little discussion we had just there. I mean, it, was, it had moral principles involved in it. Mm-hmm. It had technology involved in it. 
It was wonderful. Very little technology. (laughs) All right. In just a minute, I will make a grilled eggplant emerge from my left ear. You will. No, but I figured after that promo, even my lousy puzzler will sound intellectual. We'll be back in a minute. It's a top-down Saturday. The wind's in my head. Dave Olney's on the radio singing about a millionaire. That's kind of what it's like when you've got one hand on the wheel and you're rolling in a ragtop automobile. Everybody loves a convertible car. Make a new do well feel like a television star. Make a plaid skirt school girl wanna study some sin. Make a coal miner's daughter feel like Lauren Lynn. And even those skeet shooters everywhere yell pull and toss their radios into the air when they hear us say it. This is NPR. Support for the Car Talk podcast and the following message comes from Exxon and Mobil, the exclusive fuel partners of the Plenty Rewards Program. 500 points is worth at least $5 in savings. You can pick up a Plenty card at an Exxon or Mobil branded station and start earning points right away. Thanks for listening to Car Talk. Have you heard Up First, the morning news podcast from NPR? When news moves fast, it's the quick morning update on what happened and what you need to start the day. Wake up with Up First tomorrow morning by 6 a.m. Eastern Time on the NPR One app and wherever you listen to podcasts. Ha! We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers, and we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and the new puzzler. And and, and this was uh, submitted by... Uh, uh, someone named Dennis Michaud from an, uh, an outfit called MathWorks, and and I like this. Oh, just MathWorks! Cool. And and the best thing about it is I don't even have to obfuscate or. It's already obfuscated. Yeah. Excellent. And this contains elements of uh, uh, mathematics. I would have to say a geography. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Does it involve great circles? It could. <laughs> The company that Bobo works for it just finished a new product and wanted to promote it across the country. So Bobo was asked to travel by car to each of the 48 contiguous mm. U.S. states, you know, to promote the product. He was told that he could visit each state in whatever order he chose, but the company wanted it to start in Delaware at their headquarters, you know. Gotcha. They're one of those sleazy companies that has incorporated in Delaware so they can... So they can sleaze people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and they asked that he visit each state only once. Now, he thought that was a little odd that during the trip he could not go back into a state he had already visited. This is the Don't Look Back product tour, I guess. <laughs> so Bobo sat down at his desk and began to plan his trip. Yeah. He realized immediately it was going to be one long car trip. Yeah. At that moment, his boss stopped by and said, Hey, I'm going to join you when you reach your last state. Oh. Okay. I was born there, and I've been looking for a reason to go back and visit. Ah. You can leave your rental car there, and I'll fly you back in my private jet. Since Bobo hadn't planned his trip yet, how did his boss know which state was going to be the last last state? He's starting off in Delaware. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to wind up in this state that the boss had grown up in. Which yeah. state will that be? Now, if you think you know the answer, write it on a $20 wow. bill and send it to Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our fair city. Matt 02238. Or you can email your answer to us from cartalk.com. Uh, but right now, give us a call about whatever question you may have. The number is 888 888- Car Talk, that's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hello, gentlemen. Hi. I've got a, a problem. I've got a, a Mazda 626. Um, it's cream-colored. Cream, okay. Yeah. And I've got ants in my car. Oh, oh dear. And these are not relatives of, of either of my parents. These are little teeny <laughs> ones. <laughs> First of all, more important than anything, we need to know to whom we are speaking. Oh, well, my name is Randy. Randy, where are you from? Well, I'm in the moment in Green Bay, Wisconsin, but normally out in sunny San Diego. Oh. Well, you... Oh, so you in the witness protection program or something? Oh, he's visiting Green... his girlfriend. Actually visiting my family. Got a little bit of surgery that um, my, my mother needs to be done. And you want to be with her. Exactly. What Good a for guy. you. What and a... in the meantime, they infested your car with ants. Exactly. In Green Bay. Well, the, the car is actually out in San Diego. I want to get back. I'd like to oh. learn how to perform an antectomy. 
for the car has San Diego ants. When were you first aware of this infestation? I mean, how did it manifest itself? Did they, like, crawl into your jockey shorts or what? <laughs> well, close. It was about three weeks ago on a dark and stormy night. I was getting ready to... Uh... <laughs> To drive away, and I noticed ants down around the shifter level. Exactly. Level I was going car. to suggest that they were coming in through the shifter. Your ESP is right on target. Well, you yeah. know why the ants have come? Uh, I'm just going to guess because I don't know anything about anything, but I would guess you've had a lot of rain in your area. Uh, more than twice as, twice the amount of normal rain. No and that will, that will draw. Sure. I mean, ants live where? Ants live, I don't know. They underground. Live, they live in his car Unless now. Unless <laughs> they can't live underground because it's what? Flooded. I would think so, so the ants have sought higher ground, and, and they they, well, they like it's a little known fact, but they like cream colored Mazdas. Ah. Mm. So they have worked their way up the tires under the underside of your chassis, and they found mm-hmm. the one the one opening, which is probably a torn shifter boot, mm-hmm. and they have wound up inside your car. Now they'll stay there in the absence of food because they can import food. They'll send take they'll send for takeout. Well, that's what they always do. Right. That's how they operate. I mean, everything's takeout. So you've got to hope that the water subsides and the ants will go back to where nature intended them to be. Well, about three weeks ago, I took them on a two-hour ride in my car, and they mysteriously vanished after that. And I think the car heated up to the point where they all bailed out. Yo, they may have. Ants don't like heat, maybe. But now they've come back again, and I was wondering, shall I uh, take them on another? I could, you know, I could drive out to the desert. And... Well, I mean, you took them on a couple-of-hour ride, but I don't think they really disappeared. Okay. And no. I don't think these is, this is a new colony of ants which has arrived. It's probably the same guys. They were just hiding. Yeah. Maybe they, did you check the back? Maybe they were just looking out the back window. Did you <laughs> take them someplace interesting? Disney World. <laughs> well, I found them under the hood. Um, in addition to the the shifter lever. Ah. But uh, not in the not in the trunk yet. No. Well, the truth is, I don't know any nice way of getting rid of them. Okay. Because unless you're willing to have the patience to wait for them to find their way back to the ground. Right, and swat them one at a time as they make their retreat. <laughs> but to the best of my knowledge, there's no protective society for ants. I don't think anyone <laughs> would really say anything what about... What do you think SPCA, Society for the Protection <laughs> of Cruelty to Ants? Prevention. Society for the Prevention of What did cruelty. I say? Protection. Oh, for the prevention... I, I contend that there should be a Society <laughs> for the Protection of Cruelty to Ants. <laughs> No, it's the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Ants. And besides, ants are, are pretty nice little guys. I don't think you should try to destroy them in any way. They're, it's unlikely they're going to hurt you. Diazinon. <laughs> <laughs> Diazinon works great on ants. No, it's cruel. There's no reason the to... up into the mountains and then just kind of freezing them out. No, I tell you, ants are pretty tough customers. You know, the only thing that's... The only tried and true remedy... Is to set your car on fire. <laughs> that will get rid of them. That Maybe. Will, that will get rid of them. And they'll right. go into your house. Unless they're fire ants. Well, what year is the Mazda? Oh, it's an old one. Set it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you need to spray. Okay. Yeah, either that or put a lot of those ant traps in there. It'll be a good conversation starter. Well, where would they put them? On the ball joints and... Uh... <laughs> No, I, I would probably put them in the car. Once they once they realize that the interior of the car is inhospitable, okay, they will leave. Well, do the ant traps kill them, though? That's not nice. I don't see any reason to kill the little guys. Well, They're I not bothering maybe... anybody. They're bothering Randy. Why? Because they're they, going to start crawling up in his shorts pretty keep, soon. They're keeping him company. He what? takes those long rides into the desert, <laughs> and he's got seven or 800 little guys keeping him company. Diazinon. <laughs> see you, Randy. <laughs> Good All luck. Right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, can I read a letter? Go for it. I have. You want something short? Anything. Short is good. Something good. No, uh, good's not even a criterion. Short, <laughs> short is definitely a criterion. All right, here's. The, I'll give you a short instead of good. <laughs> I got a note here from someone who didn't sign it, uh, but it says, "Congratulations on your new MG." I will refrain from the myriad Lucas Electric jokes. And I'll give you a story from my British sports car days. <laughs> he says, I once saw an MG with the following bumper sticker on it. The parts observed falling from this vehicle are manufactured by the finest British craftsmanship. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been the, U- the UAW British division. <laughs> and it may be true. I mean, it may be that the parts are manufactured with fine craftsmanship. They just aren't attached. Well, they, they, exactly. I think that's the problem. Attachment. Yeah. Attachment is very, very important. Actually, parts have not been falling. Oh, yeah, they have, haven't they? Well, parts I mean, have been falling off. Define parts. 
<laughs> uh, Has anything fallen off? I mean, the clutch in, in return my, spring to, fell to me, off. A, a part, the exhaust system a part fell off. is a piece that is integral to the performance mm. of the car. Has the car <laughs> performed any worse or better? <laughs> Since any of these parts has well, fallen uh, off? Well, I hardly noticed any difference when the clutch return spring fell off. It still ran. The clutch still worked. And when the exhaust system fell off, it made a lot of noise. But, but it didn't affect the way the car didn't affect, ran. If you were deaf, you would not have known there was anything wrong. The car ran perfectly See, well. So those exhaust hangers and that clutch spring turned out to be of no consequence. That's right. And they, that, those parts, that is the true virtue of English-British engineering. It is. They have it? recognized the no, the no <laughs> consequence. The no consequence. Concept. Of, Sure, things could fall off. I mean, that's going to happen anyway. But see, like when you were in That's the, what they mean by over-engineering. See, NASA engineering. doesn't understand this yet. No. Every single piece of you that... You lose damn one sp- tile, that's it. That's it. The <laughs> whole thing blows up. You You're could lose for. probably 60, 70% of the parts. What if, like, the the passenger seat fell out? Would I care? Never. No. The hood blows up. The, sorry, the bonnet blows away? What do I care? Yeah. Jeez, those this Brits are smarter the, the than we think. the fine tradition of your dart. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, it. God. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Look, if you, if you got some mail for, for uh, the male brother, <laughs> hey, if he's the male brother, that's your other female brother. Make, <laughs> send him your thoughts at Mail for Tommy, Car Talk Plaza, Box thirty five hundred, Harvard Square, Cambridge, Our Fair City, Matt zero two two three eight, or you can email him from cartalk dot com. If you have a question about your car, now's the time to call. The number is one eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight eight eight. Two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Ellen calling from Boston. Can you hear me? Hey, Ellen. Ellen! Yes, of course we can hear you. Hi. Boston, actual Boston, Boston. Just across the river from Car Talk Plaza. No cool. kidding. Yes. Well, I'm calling with a moral, ethical, legal question I really oh, need your help man. with. Oh, I think we may have to excuse ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Honda Civic. It's a four-door sedan, and it's red. And it seems to have a curse on it. It's been um, in three crashes. Mm. It's been vandalized nine times. Ooh. A tree fell on it. It's been stolen and unfortunately returned. And then there was the time that I thought it was vandalized and brought it into the body shop for what I hope was a small repair. And the forensics expert at my body shop told me that, in fact, a couple of kids had had a fight on it. And he could determine that because the dents were not angled as they would have been if it had been smacked with a crowbar. They were rounded as if a body had been shoved into oh, it. Oh, like someone's head had been oh. smacked. Wow. Wow. Clearly the car, you know, it's bad karma, pardon the expression. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to get rid of it. I'm just tired of having major car problems and having to spend $500 of my deductible mm-hmm. on getting it fixed. Yeah. And I need to know, here's the moral question, how much do I have to disclose about all these things to prospective buyers? Nothing. Nothing? No. <laughs> no, because... And you and you gave us the, <laughs> uh, this is going to be good. <laughs> you gave us the reason yourself, because all these things that have happened to the car don't necessarily have anything to do with the car, but they really have to do with the fact that you and the car are incompatible. So, are, is what you're saying that it's possible that the curse is on me and not the no, car? No, the curse is on. It's just like the union, the yeah, union you know, of you I mean, and the car. You know, you can take. Two perfectly nice people, and they get married, and horrible things happen. Only because, not that each of them individually is an evil person, but that the union is wrong. Bad karma. (laughs) And so, all of these things that have happened to the car may not happen ever again. Well, what if they ask, has the car Uh, been in a crash? Well, there is a way out of that. You can hire an agent to sell your car. (laughs) (laughs) This is why when you go to look at a house that's for sale, the owner is never there. No. And the real estate agent yeah. answers to... Does it have any termites? Well, well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. They, I don't, they didn't I, say anything. Gee, I don't think so. Yeah. And, of course, they don't ask the, the seller any of these questions because they don't want to know. So you could hire you could hire, you could hire a real estate agent to sell your car. <laughs> <laughs> They're good at non-disclosure. Based on what you're telling me, what I really need to do is divorce this car. But I, I think you—I mean, you have to disclose. I mean, you're... okay, but if I disclose, would you buy this car if I told you all these terrible things that happened to it? I mean, this happened. No, but my city. brother would. <laughs> <laughs> this happens in the city. It happens in the suburbs. It happens on vacation. Wherever I take this car, bad things happen. To yeah, well, I mean, no, and, and and anyone that looks at it is going to figure it's you. <laughs> Maybe once, 
Maybe you can dress in a manner. That's comforting. Maybe you can dress up in a manner that would make oh, them man. think for sure. Oh, that's I, oh, what a brilliant strategy. Okay, so what should I wear? I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. Well, I'll, we'll send you pictures of my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to go to one of these wacko, out-in-left-field hippie joints. Okay. Where you yeah. buy used clothing. Yeah, you got to wear some beads. Oh, yeah, beads. you got to wear patchouli. Oh, a you long, gotta wear patchouli, long dress. Patchouli perfume. Yeah. You that? And a great big piece. Of- and have your hair hanging way down. And don't <laughs> bathe for like four or five days. And <laughs> Yeah. And then people will say, it's clearly not the car. It's this wacko <laughs> Ellen. I think that's the method I would use. You've got to deflect. Full disclosure. In fact, make stuff up. <laughs> tell them. Tell them that the. Tell I them that you make and the. Anything better you don't, than that. Yes, you can. Yeah. You and the car were taken away by an alien spaceship. And ever since that time, all these things have happened. See, the wackier and you make it sound, the more unbelievable it will be. And then when they find out the price, if it's reasonable, they'll just buy it and take yeah. it away from you. I think that's the technique I'd use. Well, speaking of price, should I underprice it to make it a really Definitely. good Definitely. I just want to get rid of this. Way thing. under. Oh, okay. Yeah. You get the outfit. You put an ad in the paper. Don't shower. And it, it, it's no problem. And you'll have this thing and sold. And splash on some patchouli. Yeah. And you'll, be, right. you'll have it sold in an hour. All right. See you, Ellen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh God! One, <laughs> I love your strategy, though. I love it. What? What was that? What? That she she dresses up weird so people immediately think she's focus a on her right. as the problem and not the car. This poor car. Well, isn't that what you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Well, look, it's happened again. You've wasted another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Our esteemed producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, Bongo Boy Berman. Our associate producers are David the Calves of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher Fenelosa. Our web lackey is Doug the Old Grey Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman. And our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor, just back from the -the off-the-map, ginger snap, chocolate frap, mushroom cap, maple sap, black strap, kitchen scrap, turkey wrap, beer and tap, pre-buffet reconnaissance lap. (laughs) It's John Bugsy Law.